what's going on guys welcome to the channel today i'm going to be doing an oil change on my charger scat pack just a list of items we're going to need for it i got two jack stands a light because i'm losing sunlight you got a oil filter you're gonna need some wheel chocks i got gloves safety goggles funnel a drain container. I have a 15 quart jack. Low profile jack will do better, but I have another way to get this car up in the air. Also bought a breather hose because mine needed a change. You're going to need a 13 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter socket as well to remove the bolt underneath the car. So let's get over there to the car. I'll show you what I'm going to take off first. All right, I had the hood propped up for a couple hours, let the engine cool up. I also left the garage open just to get some air circulating through here. First thing you wanna do, remove this gas cap or the oil cap. Next, we're gonna put the car in the air. Place this underneath. I don't know if you can see that triangle, but you're gonna wanna put your jack stands on those triangles to hold the frame up. You're gonna do it one for each side. So let me set this down and get the jack underneath there and then get the other side propped up. All right, even with my brake on, I'm gonna go ahead and use these wheel chocks. It can never be too careful. I actually should have did this before I hoisted the car in the air, but make sure you get both of your wheels. Make sure you kick it under there, jam it under there real good. So as far as up top, we're done with everything up top. Uh, for the bottom, I highly suggest you get cardboard or uh, any type of board. If you're working in your garage like me and you don't want to spill any oil because it's a pain in the ass to get up. Start getting your undercarriage ready, get your drain container and everything ready. All right, let's go underneath. For also, I recommend that you use glasses, any type of goggles. And if you're dealing with warm oil, uh, go with the gloves. It's gonna get a little messy down there. So let's get suited up and get underneath the car. All right, once you guys are under, you're gonna look for four screws to remove this maintenance pan. There's one here, one on the other side, and there are two up front. So let's work on getting these off. You need a 10 millimeter socket for these. Be careful when you're underneath here. This is where a lot of debris gets kicked up. So make sure that you have something covering your face and your eyes as you don't want all these rocks and dirt falling on you. There's also arrows labeling these, so you can't miss them. That's gonna be a little harder since I installed this uh, this splitter. It's a bit of a pain in the ass because everything is. It's like this maintenance pan is aiding and securing the splitter on, so I'm gonna have to do a little finessing to get this off. Okay, that was simple. Right. Maintenance pan dropped. This right here is the drain plug that has to come off. That requires a 13 millimeter bolt. I mean, 13 millimeter socket, I'm sorry. And this is your oil filter right here. 
This isn't factory, this is my third change, so this shouldn't be too hard to get off. So I'm gonna set this down and give you guys some tips as far as how to pull this thing out without getting oil everywhere. Because once that plug is removed, this oil is gonna just shoot everywhere. So you gotta be ready for it. That's why I have my drain uh, container down here with me. So let me set the camera down to get a little situated as far as getting tools organized and where I'm gonna put the stuff at to get this thing taken care of in the cleanest way possible. Two hours later. All right. Now, here's where it gets messy. So pull your drain pan close while you're turning. Keep the bolt, keep some pressure on it. And when you're on the very last thread, go ahead and pull out. Okay, once the oil is fully drained, go ahead and wipe it down, get all the excess off, and clean off this bolt, and you can go ahead and thread it back. All right, you do hand tight first. Um, I'm not sure of the specs for it as far as like the how much it's supposed to be torqued down to, but I'll usually make it snug and then just go one more extra. Okay, so my original idea isn't working. I think I have another way to take this filter off, so be right back. I tried one of these, um, it didn't work. So I had to move on to a different method. So basically how this works is you just run your ratchet through here with an extension and place it over the filter and twist it off. You gotta be shitting me. So I thought that I had the right filter removal tool. I didn't, so I'm gonna have to use this one. It's a universal one. I should have went with this in the first place. But I'll explain why I had to go with this choice when I'm finished. Let's get this filter off. Once you get this cleaned out, wait a little bit. Just gonna wipe around it. Make sure there's nothing left so you can get a good thread with this new filter. Now, I have the new filter with me. Basically, what you wanna do is you wanna just coat the O-ring in there. I just poured a little bit in there and I coated the ring to not have it too dry when you apply it on. You're gonna do this by hand first. You're gonna just thread this on. Make sure you get it nice and hand tight, not too tight but I usually do it by hand. When you got it, good to go. And I'm not gonna put the maintenance pan back on here yet because I don't. I wanna make sure I don't have any leaks when I put the new oil in. So as far as now, we're done with all the bolts here. So make sure that's tight and that's tight. And we're gonna go up top and I'm gonna put the breather hose on and we're going to put the seven quarts in. So here is the new breather filter. I'm gonna be removing the old one. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this thing is disgusting. Get some light on that. It's even missing a piece. One of the thirds came off. All right, so out with the old, then with the new. seven quarts. All 
Alright, this is the last of it. Okay. So I'll put the cat back on. And we're gonna start and run the car. Then I'm gonna check underneath to make sure nothing's leaking, everything is sealed properly. Then I'll put the maintenance pan back on. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and give the car a little start. finished all I had to do is just remove the wheel chocks from the rear tires so basically I wanted to touch basis with my whole issue with the filter um, a couple of months ago when I had my last oil change I didn't have time to do it based off my work schedule I couldn't do it so I took it to a local shop to have it done they used this filter to put on the car and I don't know if you guys have changed your own oil or whatever, but if you're a first time uh, person attempting to do this, this is not the right filter. So they put the wrong filter on the car. So I will be doing my own from here on out. But um, yeah, so that's taken care of. And this is the breather filter that I was mentioning earlier that actually is missing a piece of the filter. But yeah, everything's good. Everything's good to go on that. We're all finished up. And as far as I was having so many troubles with this filter, is because I had the wrong one. I initially chose to use this one, but it wouldn't fit on that smaller filter. So I went with this one, and then I realized, okay, wait, I have a really small filter. So I had to resort to the universal one. So all of these work. Um... My last time I changed my oil, the very first oil change I had, I did try to use this one and it didn't work. So I wound up going with this one right here, the 93 millimeter one. So if you ever are in the market for one of those and you are having trouble using the original, you go ahead and grab one of these instead. Well, that about wraps it up. Um, changing your oil is definitely a good skill to have. I highly recommend it over you know, taking it to a dealership or anyone else doing it because you may end up with shit like this. Um, also, I'll leave a uh, links in the description as far as where to get all the parts to do the oil change. Um, doing your oil does not void your warranty. I know in certain states or certain dealerships, they offer X amount of oil changes for two years or up to X amount of miles. Um, just make sure you read everything through and through and call, but I am 100% sure that uh, oil changes, doing them yourself, do not void your warranty. But it is always good to keep a record of everything that you have, um, your receipts. Also log your uh, the mileage on the receipt, dating when you did it. Um, therefore, if you ever do run into any issues down the line, you'll be able to take the car to the dealership and they'll be able to backtrack and have your receipts to go along with you know what may or may not have went wrong so that about wraps it up for this video thanks you guys for watching comment rate subscribe check you later